Good morning, New Beginning Church, in our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining in with us to help us uplift the name of Jesus on this beautiful Sunday morning. Our scripture for this morning is 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11, and it reads, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. Resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by our, your fellow believers throughout the world. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. To him be dominion forever. Amen. The song that's been on my heart this week is, I feel like going on. Though trials come on every hand, I feel like going on. So let us keep pressing our way. I know that everybody is going through some things in their lives. Some of us have loss of jobs, loss of loved ones. We've got sickness going on in our lives. But keep holding on and realize that you are not alone. Regardless of what you're going through, God is faithful and God is able to take us through. So let us continue to hold our heads up and know that God is there for us. He's going to strengthen us and help us to make it through. I feel like going on. Jesus Christ, we come. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity, Father, to come before you. We thank you for who you are, for what you do, the way you do things. 
We thank you, Father God, that you are teaching us your ways in the midst of showing us your mighty acts. We thank you, Lord, that you are God and we are not God. We thank you, Father God, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for keeping us and molding us and shaping us. God, we honor you today, Father God, for this great high time in the Lord. God, we thank you for the privilege of coming before you. Lord, we know that we are short. We have fallen short. We have not given all that we could give unto you. And for that, Father God, we thank you for giving us another chance. Blessing us again, Father God, just to show up in your presence. No, Lord, we ask you to bless us now. As we come to lift our voices. As we come to raise our hands. As we come to lift up the name Jesus. We pray that you bless us now. We thank you for forgiving us for our sins. We thank you for forgiving us for those sins we intended to commit. And those sins we committed by way of omission. Bless us in this service today that your Holy Spirit will reign. That you will speak to us and bless us. Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen. Let me thank you again for joining us here at the New Beginning Church at our remote location. Thank you for being a blessing to our church and being a part of our church service on today. We're excited that God has given us another chance, another privilege to come before him and to bless his holy name. We thank you, Lord, for giving us another privilege. We thank you for joining us as we praise the awesome and the amazing God. We thank him for the, uh, the awesome privilege of praising him one more time. Let me thank those who are, who are watching by way of Zoom. Thank you for sticking with us as Zoom has been having many issues here lately. I guess it's because every church in the world is on Zoom and Facebook Live. And thank you for joining us here on Facebook Live at the New Beginning Church Thank you for being a blessing to our ministry, and thank you for being in attendance to our church service. Our focus today will be found in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 41. The book is Isaiah in the Old Testament. The book is Isaiah, the chapter is 41, and the verse, the verses are verses 4 through 6. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 4 through 6. Yes, God has given us another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. In the midst of calamities, he's blessed us again. He's blessed us again to be uh, on the land of living. Really, it's the land of the dying headed for the land of the living. And we thank God for this privilege today to be about his, his holy business. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 4 through six. Isaiah chapter 41, verses four through six. When you found it, you will discover these words. Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am the first. And with the last, I, he, I am he. The coastlands saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid. They drew near and came. Everyone helped their neighbor and said to his brother, be of good courage. I want to talk about just for a little while. I, the Lord, am he. I, the Lord, is he. Obviously, in the book today, Isaiah is talking about the Lord. <laughs> he is the one who causes us to be protected. What is happening in the text, this is a courtroom scene. Isaiah records from God's court. 
Can't you see the bailiff walking in now? The bailiff is saying, all rise, all rise. The honorable judge, God himself, is in charge. Mm -hmm. The bailiff would say today, all rise, all rise. The honorable judge himself, God himself, is in charge. The God himself is the one that's calling us to the courtroom today. When we look at the text, we find out that we find ourselves in similar situations as the people of Isaiah's day. You see, we find ourselves in a great calamity. We find ourselves at a moment in our lives where Democrats can't get it right. Well, Republicans can't fix it, and they wouldn't if they wanted to. When independents don't know what to do, God is calling, as he has called so many times, this nation and this world to his courtroom. God is the judge. He calls us to his courtroom. And as he calls us to his courtroom, he reminds us that I am God. I am God alone. You see, the Israelites find themselves being bombarded and attacked on every hand. Much like we are today, we are attacked by a seen and unseen enemies. Regardless of what we go through, God has called us to the courtroom today. And he is saying, even in the midst of COVID-19, he is saying that he's not pleased with what we're doing. All right. God is saying, God is saying, as he said in the days of Isaiah, men have turned every one of them to their own ways. Men have gone astray and walked away from God. He reminds us through the voice of Isaiah he reminds us that we've done our own thing. We, like sheep, have nibbled away from the sheepfold. Yeah, right. We have turned our backs on the almighty God himself. In the text, it appears, at first glance, it appears that the people are on one accord for the right reason and the right thing. It appears that they are, they are walking on one accord to support their neighbor. It appears, when you look at verses number 7, 8, 9, it, it appears that, that they are on one accord. It says, every neighbor helped him, his friend, and helped his neighbor. Mm -hmm. It appears that God is in support of neighbors helping neighbors. And, and yes, we ought to help our neighbor. That's right. The reason why we are re broadcasting from a remote, remote location is because we do not want our neighbors, our friends, our fellow yokemen in the gospel and those who are saints to fall victim to COVID-19. We broadcast from a distant place because we don't want to come in contact with our brothers and our sisters and, and, and then corruption will spread out and sickness will spread throughout the congregation. Yes, we, we must mask up. We must put on our masks. And we, it, it doesn't take very much to wear a mask. You see, I, I, I'm, I'm reminded as, as we make our way to the gyms, uh, we find men and women with masks on and they, they're jogging because they want to suppress the, the incoming air so it will build up their lungs. But now that masks are are being sanctioned and masked or are being we have been told to put on our masks, those same men and women don't want to wear their masks. Wow. And then it's not a big thing. It's not it, 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 a matter of fact you can get your mask and mask your wardrobe. If you don't like the medical mask, if you don't like the mask that, that you had made, get you one or two made for every wardrobe you have. 
Now is the time for us to mask up, for us to cover up, to not only protect ourselves, but most of all, to protect our brothers and our sisters, to, to protect those we speak with, those we come in contact with. It is ours to mask up and protect yes. our fellow man. Not only should we be masking up, we should hold our social distances apart. We should stand six, seven, eight, now even up to 15 feet away because when we speak, it has a tendency for droplets to come even 15 feet away. It is time, it is time for us to set aside the church building for a while. So that we can become safe, so we can worship God in spirit and truth on the air as well as in the per in person later. Yeah. You see, I've received some calls and I've received some texts asking the question, when will we reopen again? Let me just say to you, and as I say to visitors, pray for your pastor. If you think he had a hard time and a hard decision to shut the church down, it is even a harder decision to reopen in a timely fashion. I say to you today, lift him up. Don't talk about him. Lift him before the Lord and ask the Lord to give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because you don't walk in his shoes, you don't have to make the decision that he makes for so many it's easy for you to complain. I say to you today, God has called us into court. Yes. And because he's called us into court, we need to understand that in this courtroom setting that God has called us into, we are guilty as charged. Mm -hmm. Yes, I say to you, we're guilty. We're guilty as charged. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. Yes. It doesn't matter how often you go to church. It, it doesn't matter how well you give to the saints of God and how much you give to the church itself. Let me tell you, God has called you to court this morning. Yes. We, as the day, as the people in the day of Isaiah, we have turned every one of us away from God. There's not righteousness among them, nor is there righteousness among us. We have turned away from the Holy God. It is the Holy God that has kept us this far. It is God himself that who, who has made us who we are. It is God himself who has blessed us to be who we are. And let me tell you, it ought to be God that keeps us, and we ought to make sure that we stay on task with God and God alone. God, God is saying we have not walked in righteousness. God, the, the charges against us are real. The evidence is clear. We are guilty as charged. We have not done the right thing before God. Amen. Paul says in Romans 3 that we all have sinned. He didn't say y'all have sinned. He said we all have sinned and we all have fallen short of God's glory. None of us have anything we can brag about. We just have stopped sin temporarily. We have just stopped sin because we got too old to do it over, over again. We have just stopped sin because the Holy Spirit has unctioned us to. But the fact of the matter is we cannot make fun of other folk because our sin is different from their sin. I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know that God is calling us in court. We're already guilty. We don't have to hear the final report from the judge. We don't have to hear the final report even from the, the jury. We don't have to hear the prosecuting attorney stand up and plead his case against us. Let me just tell you, you're guilty. Yes, sir. And you're guilty as charged. And God has called us to the courtroom setting to remind us that we need to make a change. Yes. I'm convinced, I'm convinced that regardless of what goes on with the COVID-19 virus, I'm just telling you that God is going to be the one to bring us through it. Amen. Athletes and entertainers are promising us 
all over the world that we're going to get through this together. The fact of the matter is we don't want anybody to die. We don't want anybody to fall short. We don't want anybody to get sick. But the fact of the matter is we got to turn to God in order to make it. Amen. Entertainers can't help us now. Athletes can't help us now. The God we serve is the only one who can help us at this day and time. Yes. But look at the text. Verse number two says that God is the one who calls and raises up one from the east. Mm -hmm. Who is in righteousness calls him to his feet. God is looking. God is calling. God is unctioning somebody that will, will, will turn this nation around. God is looking for somebody who can be a blessing to this nation, one who will operate in righteousness. I stop by to tell you that now don't get confused. The person who will unction us and call us to righteousness, he is not necessarily right. He's not living in righteousness because God always uses everything and everybody to get his message across. You know, he used Judah, Judas, don't you? He used Judas to get us saved. He used Judas to get Jesus to the cross. He used Judas to, to be a blessing to us, one that was a son of perdition. So God says he's calling. He's, he's calling one from the east who in righteousness will call him to his feet. He reminds us that all that we serve, all that we worship other than him is nothing but stubble. Mm -hmm. It will be bundled up and burned. It will be turned away. And he's calling someone to raise their voices, to lift their hearts, to lift their hands. It is what is known as the prophetic calling. This prophetic calling, this prophetic leadership is not leadership that will say that God's going to bless you. I, I see in my spirit that God is going to bless you. Prophetic leadership in this sense is when you speak right in the midst of wrong. Prophetic leadership is when someone calls wrong out in order to set everybody else on straight street. God is raising up somebody. It's calling him, he says, from the east. And he began to ask the question. There are oftentimes in court where rhetorical questions are asked. Many times in court, questions are asked where the prosecutor and the judge already knows the answer. Such it is in this courtroom setting. He asked the question in verse number four. Who has performed and done it? calling the generations from the beginning. God asks a question that he's willing to give an answer to. Let me just tell you, not always will God use the righteous to do his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God will use the unrighteous yeah. to do his righteousness. Yes. You know, you know, you know Rahab, don't you how how God used her to hide hide his children while the, those who would victimize them went on the run. Mm -hmm. Let me just share with you today, God doesn't have to use us because of, we're righteous. God uses us because he chooses to, because his mercy endures forever. Mm -hmm. He uses us because of his amazing grace that he has given us what we have. Yes. Not because we're righteous, but because Jesus imputed righteousness in us. God asked the question, who has performed? Who has done it? Who has called generations from the beginning? Mm -hmm. I, I, the Lord, am the first. And with the last, I am he. God says, he answers his own question here. God says, says to us that I'm the Lord. I'm the one who has called from generations to generations. 
I'm the one who will call those away from idol worshiping. What's going on here is, what's going on here is that, that those in the text are worshiping their idol gods. They're worshiping their idol gods. They put gods before our God. They have put gods before the almighty God. And you hear God saying, I'm a jealous God. Yes. You shall not have any other God before us, before me. He, he says, you should not have any other God before me. It is right to say before us, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's a jealous God. He doesn't want anybody else to take his fame nor his glory. He's a jealous God, and he asked the question, who has been doing the calling? Who has been the one who got it done? Who has been the one who have performed your blessings? Mm -hmm. I asked the question this morning to all of you who are listening. Who has blessed you all night long? Mm -hmm. While the thieves were stealing. Mm -hmm. While the robbers were robbing. While the burglar alarm system couldn't work. While police officers were kicking down the wrong doors and shooting the wrong people, who is it that have kept you? Yes. It's nobody other than Almighty God, our great protector himself. He says, I am the Lord, I am first, and with the last, I am he. The point is made here that God is not controlled by time. He is the beginning and he is the end. God is not designated by time. God is not situated by time. Matter of fact, God is not managed by time. Matter of fact, he is the master of time. And because he's the master of time, he was there in the beginning. He was there before the beginning began. He was there in eternity past, and he will be there in eternity, in eternity future. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? He, he said, let go of your idol gods. What is your idol God? Is your job your idol God? Well, God has taken that away. Is your car your idol God? You can't pay for that without working. Is is. <laughs> It, are your children your idol God? Is your house your idol God? Is your time your idol God? Where well, you don't have time for God. Has that become your idol God? I say to you today that God don't want you to have any idol gods. Is your government your idol God? Is it, are you the one that will, that will stick with the man in the White House regardless of what he does? Has he become your idol God? Have your medicine become your idol God? <laughs> Have your spouse become your idol God? Has, has your boo become your idol God? Has your, ha, has, has your time you spend with the girls or spend with the boys, have it become your idol God? God has called us to court today to let us know we're guilty. We are guilty as charged. Have your food become your idol God? You know, some people just have to eat. I mean, they just they just have to, they just have to have they are they are food connoisseurs and and they have to eat every hour or so. And it, and have your body become your idol God? Is God your God? Is God the one you depend on? Is God the one you put your faith and your trust in? Is God the one that you're going to to live with and live for? He says, who has called, who, who has unctioned, who has called us into this court setting? Then verse number five, he says, the coastman saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid. They drew nigh and they came. Mm -hmm. What the writer is saying here is that when people are going through calamity, those with good sense, will draw near to God. But in the text, there are some that don't even have good sense in the time of calamity, so they won't even draw near to God. God says, come now. Let us reason together. 
Though your sins be as scarlet, I will wash you whiter than snow. Come now, let us reason together. Yes, sir. Says the ends of the earth were afraid. We're living in a time now that China is afraid. The United States is afraid. Russia is afraid. You know, they can put on a big front and they can talk about, well, you know, this virus is not going to be serious. It's going gonna, it's gonna to show up. 15 people will die from it and poof, like a miracle, it will be gone. Let me tell you, God is not going to let any man decide what he's going to do. The God that we serve is running the place. The God that we serve is making the call. The God that we serve is the one that's making things right. You better stop depending on man. Stop depending on stuff. Stop depending on your stuff and depend on God. Can't depend on your 401k because it has been depleted. Can't depend on your 403b because it's dropping like a rock. You can't depend on your retirement nor your pension. You can't depend on your social security. You have to depend only and strictly on God. Yes. Says that they're coming. They're, they're being called from, from coast to coast. They're being called in from, from place to place. They're being called in. They're being, they're being called in to court. And let me tell you, if you don't show up in court, you're going to jail. If you don't show up in court, you're going to have a, a bad life for yourself. God has called us to court to bless us, to realize that God is yet on the throne. And he's telling us we got to get it right. You may fool the preacher. You may fool the deacon. But you can't fool God. You may do what you do in the dark, but you can't hide from God. You may sneak and think nobody is seeing you, but you can't hide from God. God is watching us, and God is seeing, and he's calling for us to come to court. Amen. And you might as well plead guilty. <laughs> don't even worry about no contest. Don't, don't worry about being, being called innocent. When you plead guilty before God, then Jesus can wipe away your sins. Yes. The problem is some of us don't even have sense enough to plead guilty. We don't have to tell men we're guilty. We don't have to confess it before each other, but we need to confess it before God. God, I messed up again. Mm -hmm. And when you tell God you messed up, call out what mistake you made. Mm -hmm. God, I messed up again. Lord, I said I would not do it again, but Lord, I've done the same thing again. Yes. It's a blessing when you go to God and and tell them you messed up. It's a blessing to go to God and say, God, I've fallen short. God, I've done that same sin over and over again. Lord, I'm living in sin. Lord, my mind is stuck on sin. I told you last week, sin will always take you further than you can afford to go. Sin will always make you stay longer than you wanted to stay. And sin will always make you pay what you cannot afford to pay. You might as well come before God and say, God, I give up. God, you're right and I'm wrong. God, I have sinned. God, I put other things and other people before you. God, forgive me. I messed up. And then and only then can we get it right with God. Mm -hmm. See, when, they, when God calls you to court, and he's calling us to court every day. My babysitter back home. At the age of six or seven, my babysitter used to tell me, Mary Lee Clark used to tell me that every day of your life, you need to make sure that you tell God, Lord, have mercy on my soul because you've done enough in that one day to have a messed up life. You need to understand that God is calling us onto court and he's calling us back to himself. We look at verse number nine in Isaiah 41. It says, everyone helped his neighbor and said to his brother, be of good cheer. At first glance, it looks real good. <laughs> at first reading, it looks like every neighbor, it only makes sense for every neighbor to help each other. 
It only makes sense for, for us to go next door and get some bread when we don't have bread. Go next door and get some sugar when we don't have sugar. It looks real good at first reading. Mm -hmm. But when you really look at the text, the text is saying that they are encouraging each other to go on and commit a sin of following idol gods. Look at what it says. It says, it says, be of good cheer, be of good courage, be encouraging toward one another. It said that every person helped his neighbor. Mm -hmm. Every person helped the friend next to them and said to his brother, every person said to his brother, be of good cheer mm -hmm. or be of good courage, be encouraged. Mm -hmm. There's a problem here. When you read verses number seven through nine, you will find out that they are not really encouraging each other in the Lord. They are encouraging each other to continue to build idol gods. Let me tell you, America, out of all the things we are going through, let me tell you, world, out of all the things we are going through, let me tell you, earth, out of all the things we're going to, this is a time to turn back to God. Look at what it says. In verse number seven, it says, So the craftsman encouraged the goldsmith. He who smooths with the hammer inspired him who strikes, who strikes the anvil. They're encouraging each other because, see, the goldsmith is the one that poured out the gold in order to create the idol god. The goldsmith is the one who beat up on his anvil. He encouraged the craftsmen. They beat up on their anvils of power so much so until they created false gods. They didn't get the picture here. They didn't get the message here. They didn't get the, the memo here because God is saying you're in court. And while you're in court, you need to confess your sin to me. And because you are not confessing your sins, when you walk out of court, matter of fact, while you're still in court, you're encouraging each other to do that which is wrong. God speaks again in Isaiah 41 and 10. He says, but for those who will be righteous, those who are my chosen servants, those who I have chosen and, and have, have cast away, do this for me. Fear not, for I am with you. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my powerful right hand. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, don't, don't get caught up in the political system. Don't even get caught up in the judiciary system. You need to get caught up in God. Yeah. Because men will always encourage you to do wrong. Yeah, it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the wino that will encourage another wino. Well, you know, in order to get rid of a good drunk, you got to drink a little more. <laughs> it, is, it is the thief that will encourage a thief to, to come on, go with me, and let's steal some more. God is saying the thief ought to steal no more. Yes, the robbers ought to rob no more. The murderers ought to murder no more. And those of us in the church, we ought not be pious anymore. Simply because we need to know the great I am. God says in verse number four, I am the Lord. I am your protector. I am the one who is first. And, and I'm hanging out. I'm with those who are last. Don't worry about your oppressors. Don't worry about your oppressor. What you need to concern yourself is with the protection of the almighty God. He is our protector. He is the one who protects us and keeps us even from this virus. He is the one that keeps us even in our sickness. He is the one that protects us even while robbing is taking place. He's the one who keeps us. Yes. So you better put your hope in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Yes, it was Jesus that died on Calvary. It was Jesus that made a way out of no way. Man was on their way to hell. They had failed in the courtroom. Men had been found guilty in the courtroom. Men had fallen short in the courtroom. 
Men were inexcusable in the courtroom. But Jesus, over 2,000 years ago, Amen. he gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. Jesus, yes. he died on a skull hill called Calvary. Jesus, the one who gave his hands to the nail. Jesus, the one who gave his feet to the ribbons. Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. He died that day on that skull hill. Yes, he did. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. They nailed him tight. They put his back to the cross. They raised him high. They dropped him low. He died on a skull hill called Calvary that day. They took him off the cross laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because he gave Joseph his brand new tomb back that day for early that third day morning. He got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He rose that day. Tabernacle around here some 40 days. Caught a cloud and got out of here. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's still protecting us. He's still making intercessions for us. He died and rose, and now he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and for me. Amen. That same Jesus that caught a cloud and got out of here, he's coming back one day. And he's coming to get a church without a spot or wrinkle. He's coming to get a church that is, has fulfilled the calling. He's coming to get a church who believes the story that Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. Amen. That he rose from the dead. He's making intercessions for you and me. As we're being called into court every day of our lives, the honorable judge, God himself, the Lord, our protector, is sitting on the bench. Amen. If you are here today and you never confess Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to try him today. Yes. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to try Jesus. He's making intercession for you right now. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. Don't wait the next Sunday. Next Sunday is not promised to us. You need to get to know him for yourself. The door is open. Just trust the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. He didn't stay there for early that third day morning. He rose with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He did it for you. And he did it for me. If you believe this story, that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried in a barber tomb, that he rose early that third day morning, you can be saved right now. Right now, while the blood is running warm in your vein, you can be saved right now. Right now, while you're inhaling and exhaling, you can be saved right now. The door of the church is open. Will you get to know him as your personal savior? It's very simple. All you have to do is believe the story. Join me in prayer and ask Jesus to come into your life and make you a new person. Just repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life and you can be born again. You can go to heaven when you die. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you pray this prayer, you are now born again and you qualified to go to heaven. Not that you qualified in your own self, but because Jesus the Christ have made you whole. Because you believe the story and you trust this story to get you to heaven when you die. The door is always open and Jesus is always on the throne. If you're here today and you need prayer, why don't you inbox me and let me know you need prayer. And we will be praying for you here at the New Beginning Church. If you've received Christ today, inbox me and let me know that you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you need a church home, I recommend this one. The New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and Jesus is the main attraction. God is calling all of us to court. And he, when he's calling us to court, he's reminding us that we're wrong and he's right. And he wants us to know that he's still in the saving business. And he will turn your life around. You can't afford to go through what we're going through today without Jesus on your side. Trust him. Bless him. And he will make a difference in your life. God is on the throne and he's it's always telling us to come to him and he will make things right for us. If you're here today and you've never trusted him, now's a good time to trust him. And if you're here today and you don't have a church home, again, I recommend this one where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. You ought to trust him. This is our hope that you would trust Jesus to be your Savior. He is the one that makes the difference in our lives. Thank you again for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Chiramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. It is now time to give to the Lord. It is offering time. It is, it is offering time. It is time to give to the conquering King of Calvary. It's time to give to the Lord. If you want to give to the New Beginning Church, you can do so, first of all, by way of our cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls, NBC Souls, NBC S-O-U-L-S, NBC S-O-U-L-S, NBC Souls is our cash app. It's dollar sign NBC Souls. Please feel free to continue to give to our church and whatever you do, those who who have been given just know that I appreciate it. I thank God for you. Thank God for you being a part of our ministry. And if you want to mail in your offering, you can do so also by mailing it to P.O. Box 503. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. You can mail your offering in P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77. Four five nine seven seven four five nine P.O. Box five zero three Missouri City, Texas seven seven four five nine Cash App NBC Souls NBC S O U L S. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. We're looking forward to hearing from you, and we're looking forward to seeing you. Keep praying for the proper time for us to get together again and raise our hands and praise the Lord and victory one more time. The church is not closed. The church is still in session. Just remember, God is calling all of us to court, and we are to agree with God as God is the one that's right and we are wrong. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come before you. We pray, Father God, that you bless us in court. 
Bless us as we are guilty that Jesus will plead our case for us. Bless us that we will walk with you and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Bless us, Father God, that we will be busy uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world. Bless us to reach souls through Jesus Christ as we lift up Jesus. For Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and thank you. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. We look forward to hearing from you. Please come and be a part of our service on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. We're having Sunday school at Sunday mornings, 9 a.m., this same station. And also we are having a worship service on Sunday morning at 1045 a.m., New Beginning Church. And please join us on Wednesday nights, Wednesday at 720 p.m., we're in the book of Philippians in our Bible study. Please join us. We look forward to hearing from you. Look forward to seeing you. God bless you as our prayer. Please keep us in prayer. Be blessed.